Spring Break. Just the term makes you think of images of young people on the beach playing volleyball and drinking excessively. But it's not just young people that appreciate Spring Break. Old professors like me look forward to Spring Break every year. It's a time for an, a vacation for me, a vacation to do something different. And this year I went to Yellowstone National Park and spent a week in the park. Now I knew going at the end of March that most of the park would be closed. Only the northern portion through Larimer Valley was open and it was in that area that I spent a week looking at wildlife and observing and, and just having time to, to relax and, and enjoy. So in this video and in the next two videos, I'm gonna be sharing some reflections on my time in Yellowstone National Park. So be sure to subscribe to this channel as well as click the bell so you're notified of those two videos. One of the reasons that people frequently want to see wildlife in Yellowstone is to be able to watch the wolves, to be a wolf watcher. And that was one of the things I wanted to do while I was there. The wolves were exterminated in Yellowstone in the 1920s. They were shot and poisoned to eradicate them. And then in 1995, wolves from Canada were reintroduced into the park. And today they have thrived and there are several packs throughout the park and they've extended territory into other areas outside of the park. While I was in Yellowstone for a week, I was able to observe two different wolf packs as well as a couple lone wolves. And it was really amazing. Now, I had seen wolves before, but in captivity, you know, in, in wolves who were being cared for in sanctuaries. But seeing wolves living together in the park, that was special. The best viewing place while I was there was at Blacktail Pond. The Blacktail Pond is an interesting place. It's actually a series of small ponds that are spring fed. And because they're spring fed, the, the water is somewhat still and the, the grass will grow out over the edge of the pond so that around the edges of each pond area, there's sod. Bison will come through and they'll keep eating, you know, bison walk and eat and eat and eat and eat and keep going. And some of them will not realize that they're actually moving over water because the sod is extending and they find themselves trapped in the pond and drowned. I know it's, it sounds tragic, but this is part of the way of nature. What happened in Blacktail Pond while we were there was a grizzly bear had pulled out the carcasses of two bison. So these bison, who had been dead for some time, were laid out open for other animals of prey to feed on. And that's how we were able to observe the wolves. We would sit at a parking area and overlook on one side of a hill. The pond was down below, and then across from us was a mountain. It was very interesting to watch as the scene would unfold. And we saw this a couple days in a row in the evening that first scouts, wolf scouts would come down and check out the area and see if it was safe for the rest of the pack. Was there food there? What was the condition? And after these two wolves scouted around a bit, then they would signal to the whole pack to come down. And slowly the pack would move down the side of the mountain, each from a different position, and they would get maybe three quarters of the way down and pause. And one wolf would begin to howl and all the other wolves would join in. And for two, three, maybe four minutes, the wolves would howl together in this little bit spooky, but harmonious kind of music where they were singing to each other. And this was happening as the sun was setting. And after it was dark, then the wolves would move in and surround a carcass and sort of in a, a choreographed way, begin to feed. 
Wolves are pack animals. They act in ways to support the pack. They each have a role. There are alphas and there are people, other, not people, wolves who have other roles within the pack. And they each do that to sustain the life of the entire pack. And it's really amazing to see. Now, there are lone wolves, wolves who are not in a pack. Lone wolves are wolves who may have challenged the alpha and lost, so they're thrown out of the pack. You know, they wanted to take over, but they lost, so they're thrown out. Or they may be wolves who wanted to breed, and in a pack, only the alpha male and the alpha female breed. So if another wolf wants to breed, it needs to leave the pack. Once a wolf leads a pack, it's very vulnerable. Wolves hunt together, so it's difficult for an individual wolf to hunt and be successful. Also, wolves keep each other warm, so if a wolf that's lone doesn't find a new pack before winter, it's going to have a really difficult time to make it through winter. So a lone wolf is a vulnerable wolf and is probably not going to live very long. And because they're vulnerable and often hungry, they're unpredictable. A lone wolf wants to get back into a pack. Maybe it wants to form its own pack if it wants to breed, or maybe it will look to be adopted into another pack. What's always been curious to me is that there are some people who seem to idolize this lone wolf image and will call themselves lone wolves. They think in saying that, that they're really saying that they're strong, independent, free, and able to make their own decisions. And that's just not a lone wolf. A lone wolf is a vulnerable wolf. It's a wolf that can be somewhat desperate and unpredictable and not likely to live long. Wolves thrive. They, they do their best when they're in a pack. And as I was watching this play out and the pack behavior, I realized how similar wolves are to people. We do our best when we're in a community, when we're related to other people. Now, when I say community, I don't mean, you know, the people in our neighborhood or apartment building. We often use community in that way. But by community, I mean people that we're connected to, that we share with, that support our growth and we support their growth people who we have close relationships with. And it's in that context that we're best able to grow, to thrive, and, and to do the things that we're able to do well, to find happiness and contentment in life. The difficulty is that the lone wolf, the isolated person, often has challenges in life because they're isolated. They don't thrive. They aren't able to grow as fully as they could and often find many things difficult in life. Community is terribly important for us. It's in the context of community that we grow. Now, I know that because I have moved around the country that several significant members of my community are people who are at a distance from me. And so I keep up with them through email and phone calls and, and visiting occasionally. But we stay in very close contact and keep, take a very keen interest in each other. So today I want to ask, who's part of your community? Who are the people you can depend on and who can depend on you? Who are the people that you've built in-depth relationships with? And have you considered the importance of establishing those relationships and maintaining them? Because that community is what helps us to thrive and to grow. In the next two videos, I'm going to talk more about my time in Yellowstone and reflections on different things I experienced. So be sure to subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, like this video, click the bell, please share the video, and most importantly, know that I really appreciate that you took time to be with me today. Thanks.